Adventures, stories, fairy tales. Read by Jonathan Jones. Wollstonecraft by Karen Lewis. Not long ago, and not far away, there was a beautiful big teddy bear who sat on a shelf in a drugstore, waiting for someone to buy him and give him a home. His name was Wollstonecraft. And he was no ordinary bear. His fur was a lovely shade of light grey, and he had honey-coloured ears, nose and feet. His eyes were warm and kind, and he had a wonderfully wise look on his face. Wollstonecraft looked very smart in a brown plaid waistcoat with a gold satin bow tie at his neck. Attached to the tie was a tag with his name written in bold black letters, Wollstonecraft. He had arrived in the stall just before Christmas when there had been a lovely big tree in the window all decorated with fairy lights. Yards and yards of sparkling tinsel had been draped over everything and holiday music had been playing all the time. Wollstonecraft was especially fond of jingle bells. He liked its light, tinkling sound. It always made him feel merry. At the time, there had been lots of other bears to keep him company. In fact, there had been so many teddy bears crowded onto that one narrow shelf that he'd scarcely had room to move. But, one by one, they had all gone, gleefully waving goodbye as they were carried off to their new homes. Until finally, he was the only teddy bear left in the entire store. He had hoped that Santa Claus would drop by on Christmas Eve and deliver him to a good home. But he hadn't. Santa had been too busy that year delivering even more presents than usual. Wollstonecraft felt sad and lonely, sitting there all by himself on a shelf that was high above the Christmas cards. He longed to have a child to take him home and love him and play with him. But most of all, to hug him. For no hug is ever too big for a teddy bear. He was trying hard not to cry because he knew that tears would make his eyes all puffy and red and then he would have even less chance of finding a home. But why, oh why, didn't someone choose him? Why, he wondered, was he passed over so many times for other less beautiful bears? Then one day, shortly before Easter, three bunny rabbits were placed on the shelf beside him. They all had very big ears and feet long legs. All three were wearing woolen sweaters. Rita Rabbit wore a pink sweater. Roger Rabbit a green one and Ronnie wore blue. Roger and Ronnie were twins and Rita was their sister. My, you're a handsome bear, Rita told Wollstonecraft after the store had closed for the night. Well, I'm surprised that no one has bought you and taken you home. So am I, replied Wollstonecraft, and although he tried very hard to stop it, a tear rolled down his furry cheek. Ronnie and Roger had jumped down off the shelf and were playing tag up and down the aisles. Be careful! Don't knock anything over, Rita called to them. Rita looked closely at Wollstonecraft from every angle. She peered into his face and circled around him, her nose twitching. He had noticed that bunnies' noses twitch a lot. 
Then she sat down and remained in deep thought for a very long time. Well? He asked her, unable to stand the suspense any longer. What do you think is wrong with me? Why doesn't anyone want to buy me? Well, it must be your name. Rita answered. My name? exclaimed Wollstonecroft. What? What's wrong with my name? Oh, there's nothing wrong with your name. Wollstonecroft is a wonderful name, but it's too long for some people to say. Not everyone can pronounce it properly. Now, Wollstonecroft had always been able to say his name correctly. But then, it was his very own name, and everyone can say his or her own name. At least, he thought that they could. Not when they are very little, of course. He couldn't say his name when he was a tiny baby bear. But after he had started going to school, he knew it very well. Wollstonecroft, the teacher would call out. Will you recite the alphabet for us today? And he would name all the letters from A to Z. All 26 of them. He was a very smart bear. On Easter Sunday, very early just after the store had opened, a mommy and daddy bought Roger and Ronnie for their twin boys. They look nice, Rita said. She was happy that her brothers had found a good home, but felt sad too, because she was beginning to miss them already. At the front of the store, a table had been set up with chocolate Easter eggs, and as it was now Easter Sunday, they had been marked down to half price. After everyone had gone home for the day, Wollstonecroft picked the nicest egg he could find and gave it to Rita to cheer her up. They shared the egg, sucking on the sweet, creamy chocolate and making sure it didn't get onto their clothes. Then they started to talk about the name Wollstonecroft again. I wouldn't want to change it, Wollstonecroft declared. I mean, it's me. I've had it all my life. I wouldn't want it to change. But if it's stopping you from getting a home... Rita insisted. You may have to. She hopped over to the book department and returned with a book called What to Name Baby. Then she began reading out the names she thought might suit Wollstonecroft. What about Adrian? She suggested. It's a lovely name, very dignified. But Wollstonecroft shook his head. Well, what do you think of Bernard? It actually means brave as a bear. But Wollstonecroft was not impressed. So Rita left the bees and began flipping through the pages of the book, reading out a name for each letter of the alphabet, starting with C. David, Edwin, Francis, Grant, Howard, Ivan, Jeremy, Keith, Leonard, Miles, David, Oliver, Percy, Quentin, Rodney, Selwyn, Timothy, Lucy, Vincent, Winston. <sighs> and here she stopped because the names beginning with X, Y, and Z, Xavier, Eva, and Zachary, were too difficult to pronounce. There was no sense in taking a name that was even harder to say than the one he already had. But Wollstonecroft didn't like any of the names she suggested. They're all fine names, he said, popping a piece of chocolate into his mouth, then dabbing his mouth with a napkin. But they're just not me. Rita stayed lost in thought for a very long time, tapping her cheek with her finger. And it wasn't until the big clock behind the pharmacy counter struck ten that she finally spoke. She said. You could have a name that's easy to say and keep your name at the same time. Wollstonecroft looked puzzled. Well, that doesn't make any sense. He replied. Oh, but it does. Rita insisted. 
You only have to shorten the name you have. Wollstonecroft began to look interested. You mean I would still be Wollstonecroft, but I'd have a shorter, easier to pronounce name for those who preferred it. That's right! She cried excitedly. And you have such a long name that there are several choices. Wooly, Wollston, Sten, or Croft. Which one do you like best? Wollstonecroft thought very carefully, mulling over each name in his mind. I like Croft, he decided at last. It's very dignified. Rita looked disappointed. I like Wooly best, she said. It's so cuddly and friendly, and you are Wooly. You have a lovely thick coat. Wollstonecroft looked uncertain. You would still be Wollstonecroft, Rita reminded him. And that's a very dignified name indeed. Wooly would be a nice contrast. They talked it over for well into the night, as this was a very important decision. There are very few things as important as one's name. But finally, just before the dawn rose on the eastern sky, Rita had convinced him that Wooly was the best choice. You're right, Wollstonecroft said as he closed his eyes and prepared to sleep. It's nice to be dignified, but not to be stuffy. And so it was that Wollstonecroft became known as Wooly for short. I bet someone will come along and buy you tomorrow, Rita predicted as she fetched a black felt pin from the stationery department and underneath Wollstonecroft wrote, Wooly for short. But Rita was wrong. It was she and not Wollstonecroft who went to a new home the next day. Nobody bought Wollstonecroft that day, or the next day, or the day after that. In fact, all through that entire year, which felt very long indeed to Wollstonecroft, nobody took him home to love and to hug him. And by this time, he longed to be hugged so badly that sometimes he thought he just couldn't stand it any longer. Because of course, no hug is too big for a teddy bear. Soon it was almost Christmas time again, and the tinsel and the holly were decorating the drugstore, and the shoppers were all very merry and wearing gaily colored scarves and mittens. But still, no one bought Wollstonecroft, who was feeling extra sad and lonely sitting there all by himself, high above the Christmas cards and wrapping paper. It's my name, he decided sadly, as a tear rolled down his furry cheek. I hate it, and so does everyone else. I wish I were called anything but Wollstonecroft, even though it's now Wooly for short. Then, one frosty evening, when the stars were sparkling in the night sky and snowflakes were dancing past the windows, a little boy and his daddy came into the store. Hey, look at this, said the daddy when he noticed Wollstonecroft's name tag. This teddy bear has the same name as you, only you're called Stin for short, and he's called Wooly. (gasps) What? The boy called out in surprise. I didn't think anyone else in the whole great big world was called Wollstonecroft. And just like Wollstonecroft the bear, he was beginning to hate his name. Why don't you two get to know each other? The daddy suggested as he lifted Wollstonecroft down from the shelf. And the little boy wrapped his arms around his namesake, which means someone who has the same name as yourself, and stroked his soft fur. And they both loved each other from that moment on. I love him, daddy. Can I have him for Christmas? He asked hopefully. And when his daddy said yes, danced around the store with Wollstonecroft, 
almost colliding with other shoppers as he did so. Wollstonecroft really wasn't such a bad name after all, they both decided as they whirled around the Christmas tree at the front of the store. In fact, it was starting to sound better all the time now that they had found each other in this wonderful way. Wollstonecroft the bear had never remembered feeling this happy before. Indeed, he felt so chock full of joy that he thought he just might burst. He was going to a new home at last. And he knew that this little boy, who was called Stin, would be his very best friend forever. Then Stin gave him a hug so big that his tummy was squished. But of course, Wollstonecroft didn't care, because no hug is too big for a teddy bear. <laughs>